Before we get into discussing the rules and conventions of nomenclature, I wanted to talk a little bit about the purpose of nomenclature and why it's useful. You'll find as you learn chemical nomenclature that it's full of seemingly arbitrary rules and definitions that you have to follow to get to a name that another chemist can understand. But nomenclature is really important in the communication of chemical information. And in this video, I want to give you a sense of some of that motivation and why the rules exist. And it's worthwhile to keep this in mind throughout your study of organic nomenclature. Ask yourself, why does this rule exist? Every rule and every convention is associated with an aspect of organic structure that's interesting to chemists. A big part of the motivation for organic chemical nomenclature is that the cost of printing the structure of an organic molecule can be prohibitive. So the structure you're seeing here in three dimensions is the structure of R2-methoxybutane, which has a line or, or Lewis structure that looks like this. Now to print the Lewis structure in today's day and age is not so bad. It's one color, it's got a little bit of weird stuff in this wedge, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Of course, a long time ago when chemical nomenclature was in its infancy and chemistry was relatively young, this would have been prohibitively expensive to print in a lot of the journals that you saw. And so because of that, we needed a way to translate this name into text that made it easy for a chemist who was, for example, reading a journal article to translate the text back into the chemical structure. So it was a way to disseminate and spread chemical structures through the literature. As chemistry evolved and time went on, we learned more about the peculiarities of organic structure. And as we learned more and more, names became more and more complex. For example, in the name of this compound, the R refers to the three-dimensional information at this carbon you see here, which has the hydrogen the methoxy group, and then two alkyl groups bound to it. Once chemists understood that it was important structurally to indicate the configuration of that carbon, that became a part of the name, and it's the R part of the name. As your understanding of chemistry advances, you'll learn nomenclature conventions that are related to new concepts. Specifically, when we talk about stereochemistry, you'll learn about the RS naming convention that comes into nomenclature. For our purposes, a nomenclature system needs to be able to exhaustively identify the bonds and atoms within a molecule and how they're connected to one another. Each and every rule or convention, for example the RS convention, has at its root some aspect of structure. Much of the nomenclature of hydrocarbons uses the idea that hydrocarbons tend to contain carbon chains bound in long linear sequences like you see here. 